So you're a pretty big rapper. You have a hit that everybody's singing along with. Then you meet who you might say is the love of your life. Soulmate, right? Things go left. Then they go good again. Then they go left. Then they go good again. <laughs> Today, we're going to talk about Blueface and Chris Shine Rock. But I'm not going to do it in a conventional way. Today, we're going to talk about and recognize that they might be in a trauma bond. So, what is a trauma bond? We're going to talk about it today, and we're only going to use them for examples to show if you might be in a trauma bond type situation right after this. You were a star child, let your light shine for all the world When you open your mouth to reveal a pearl Let it shine more just to light the path If it don't add up, man just do the math If it ain't for you, let it pass on through How you doing? This is Terry Gon Wilson, a.k.a. yo boy, Brother T, here with another one. So, we like to thank you for coming to the New Life Tree, where we like to give you little pine cones of wisdom. If you don't know what that is, stick around, stay on the channel, you'll get it. So today we're going to talk about Blueface and Christian Rock. But like I said, it's not going to be in a conventional way. This is not a roast session, so I'm not going to be hard on the two young people because I understand some of you out there might be in similar situations. Let's kind of look at it and break it down. Now, your boy, Brother T, in order to get ready for this episode, I did have to do my research, right? So I looked at their show on the Zeus Network, uh, Crazy in Love, I think it's called, right? It was very interesting. Now, I wasn't too familiar with the Zeus Network. <laughs> so when I uh, subscribed, I started looking at the, the selection of the things that they put on there. And it's, it's quite an interesting network. I'll just put it like that. There's a lot of uh, what they call ratchet behavior on that network. And I thought it was interesting. OK, but more power to the people. Uh, making those shows get your money I, you know it's just not my thing <laughs> so let's get right into it so blueface who is blueface right he's a rapper i think he's from la um uh, he's affiliated we'll, we'll leave that part alone right we're not going to go too deep into that so he had a big hit called tatiana I had everybody singing it. I even knew the song, right? And I don't even listen to a lot of updated music. My music catalog is full of 80s and 90s R&B and hip hop, okay? So, hey, don't tease your man, brother T, okay? <laughs> I am aware of some of the new artists, but I, you know, I can't go deep with it. So, but I did know that hit, right? He had a song, it's pretty catchy. Um, his, his, his style of rapping, is a little unorthodox to say the least but i get it right i get i get why people like it because it's a catchy tune that tatiana song and a couple of songs that i heard after that he's pretty he knows how to uh formulate a catchy tune we'll just put it to you like that and Krishan rock is his uh girlfriend they might even be married at this point not sure <laughs> with that type, type of thing but she has a nice song too i think it was called uh, i'm a vibe or something like that not bad these two uh young people are very talented so don't think that i'm on here to roast them this is not a roast because your man brother t people can roast me all day long so i'm not gonna do that right <laughs> let's get into it let's start with what a trauma bond is so, a trauma bond is the attachment one feels for their abuser, specifically in a relationship with a cyclical pattern of abuse. Now, we're going to go into the cyclical pattern of abuse in a second. Now, but when you are trauma bonding with a person, this is very dangerous. In this situation, who is the victim and who is the abuser? It's hard to tell. I think it might be both, but they're doing it in different ways. Now, that's hard to uh, separate from a trauma bonding experience, especially if you're the person not bringing the abuse. But if both people are coming with abuses of their own in different ways and they go in these cycles, man, 
these are two people that uh, at times are going to seem like they're inseparable. <laughs> Let me tell you. So let's go deeper into it and show you the cycle of abuse. Start with a calm phase. Or some people call this a love bombing phase where it's just so lovey-dovey and everything is going seemingly perfect. Then it transitions into a tension buildup. This might be from a, a silly argument or, or just somebody nitpicking the other person. This really happens. Then often that leads to some type of violence. Now this ha doesn't always have to be physical violence, right? This can be emotional uh, abuse or things of that sort. So don't think it's just physical violence, but some type of, of violence or abusive behavior. After that, we get to the makeup phase or the honeymoon phase. Love bombing again, right? <laughs> and here we go. So the cycle abuse does not end. If that sounds familiar to you, then maybe you were in a trauma bonding situation. Maybe you're in one right now. Think about it. If you go through these cycles over and over again, there you go. Now, one of the reasons why it's so hard for some people to walk away from abusive situations is because they're in the cycle of abuse. In the cycle of abuse, the abuser doesn't abuse the person 100% of the time. People that are not abusive out there, you don't understand this. This is why people get hooked on the other person because they're bonding with that person. In some instances, the person might remind them of a relative, remind them of a parent that used to do that type of abuse, maybe e even in a different type of way. In the situation we're talking about today with these two folks, it's clear that they go through cycles of abuse. They do it on screen, on camera. When I looked at the show Crazy in Love, they did it over and over again in different episodes. You will have uh, violence or some type of uh, argument that'll lead to uh, calm. And then after the calm, then it'll be a tension phase where they, um, where you can see the build up and then the violence or abusive situations over and over and over again. This is a constant pattern. If you find yourself in those type of situations, be very aware. Let's transition and talk about different clues that can tell you if you're heading into a trauma bonding situation or that will tell you if you're in one right now. A lot of times this type of situation will start with an instant attraction and irresistible chemistry. Now, you, we actually captured this on screen with these two because he met her on a set, right? And he, he, I think he even stated instantly that he dug her style, you know, her vibe. He, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but he pretty much let it be known that this was attractive to him. He liked her style, right? And nothing wrong with that, but that's one of the things that cues you in that if you're heading into a trauma bonding situation because why is this person you just met so irresistible it could be that you're just that attracted to them that could happen that is possible however sometimes you have to step back and really take a look am i drawn to this person because they have a wild personality and a person in the past that i had a trauma with they had the type, same type personality. You have to think about it. Think very long and hard about it. Another sign is that the connection is highly physical and sexual. They made it clear <laughs> that, you know, what it is. Now, another part of that is the age of the uh, two people we're talking about, Blue and Krishan. They are at the age where you, your hormones are going crazy, right? You're doing things at that age. I remember being that age and boy, oh boy, <laughs> right? So I understand. And then this guy is rich, right? And she is probably on the road to being rich. So, I mean, boy, oh boy, they got time. They got money. They got youth on their side boy oh boy that's all i gotta say <laughs> so 
Okay, so we even touched on this in the cycle of abuse, which is the relationship cycles through extreme highs and lows. Now, unfortunately for them, well, I guess you can say fortunately or un unfortunately, they're getting paid a lot to show their life on camera. The unfortunate thing is that anybody can look at it, right? So we're all seeing the highs and we're all seeing the lows. And it appears in their situation that the lows are really, really low. Now, you'll see Krishan on some episodes go through these uh, situations where it seems like she just reacts. And a lot of times it's, it's violently. But I want you to step back and I want you to really analyze that type of situation. Most people don't wake up one day and just become violent out of the blue. We're not just regular people going about our lives and then the next day, hey, I'll just be violent for the rest of my life. It usually comes from something that happens in the past. In certain situations, you might want to take a look and see if that person was abused by somebody, right? It could be a parent, a family member, a friend of the family, right? It doesn't always have to be sexual either. It could be a physical abuse. It could be emotionally abused, right? And this said person, I'm not really talking about her per se, but anybody, you'll grow up and you'll get to a point where you say, nobody will abuse me like that again. Even if I have to be this um, monster, right? Anybody that seems like they're even getting close to disrespecting me in that way, I'm going to jump on them. I'm not going to give them a chance to abuse me like that person did, right? This happens, and I want you to take a really close assessment of your life and see if you're that type of person. Another sign that you're headed towards a trauma bonding situation is if you avoid important conversations it seemed clear on many episodes and even on other shows like no jumper and other things that they do avoid important conversations at times even though i said that both of them seem like they're in uh doing things that doesn't uh, help the situation help the relationship but you can see at times that Krishana be more assertive with certain things and he'll be a little more passive, right? You can tell that they're not talking about uh, certain situations in a healthy manner. I, under saying, I understand like, if you call like, me a bitch, I should be able to call you Jack. However, yeah. you're still responsible for your response to that. And I don't think hitting him with glass was the correct response. You hit him with glass? Yeah. That's not even what happened, look. It's more like reaction, oh baby, I love you, calm. Reaction, oh baby, I love you, calm. It seems like, and I'm just on the outside looking in, I really don't know the whole story, but it appears that they're not having healthy conversations that are uh, that can progress the relationship, right? It seems this way. So have those important conversations. If you don't, then you could be uh, in a situation where you're headed towards a trauma bonding experience. Another clue is that the relationship will feel like an addiction that you are powerless to quit. Now, this became quite apparent in the No Jumper interview. But I feel like I'm the only person who has enough patience for her. Right. So I don't want to see her demise be... Of course you don't. No, you do. I'm not for they just give up. Hey, no, Why no, crash you? out. Hey, sometimes if you love a person, love them enough to get away from them and yeah. help them. I know that this sounds valiant and it sounds like, yes, that's my woman. I'm being loyal. However, there are times where you have to step away if you really love the person. If you're in the trauma bonding situation and you see the cycles are going over and over again and it's unhealthy, you're actually hurting that person by staying in that situation. If you stay in that situation and keep those cycles of abuse going over and over again, they cannot get the help they need. They cannot heal the way they need because the way they are uh, coping with the situation that they may be dealing with mentally is to act out and then you're rewarding them by giving them the relationship 
And I'm not painting this like he is only, the victim only, right? Because he does stuff too that's unhealthy. But I'm just using the situation that was, you know, on camera, right? Which was her uh, being a certain way. And, you know, the host, which is Sharp, he was asking her, asking him, hey, this might be this type of situation. And he was saying, hey, I never give up on her. So step back. If you're in that situation and you feel the same way he did, step back. Really take an assessment on whether you are actually helping that person by staying there or if you're hurting that person or vice versa. Are you hurting that person? I mean, or is that person hurting you by staying in that situation when they know you aren't dealing with the traumas that you've dealt with in the past? So now we're going to transition into some things that you can do if you find yourself in a trauma bonding type situation. What can you do about it? First, you can communicate your needs clearly. If the person does not know what you need out of the relationship, then they're just going to keep doing what they're doing because it's working right the cycle of abuse the calm periods and the love bombing phase that part of the cycle is happening people use that part to get back to the other part and they'll say that that's a small part of it but the big part is the calm that we're having no that's not healthy <laughs> it's not healthy so you have to communicate your needs clearly if you need um, a situation where you need somebody to hear you, to listen to you, to be um, a person that supports you. You do not need to be going through the cycles of abuse over and over again. The next thing you can do, this is an easy one, is you can remove yourself from the situation. A lot of times that is the solution. Even if it's temporary, right? Remove yourself from the situation and be serious about it. Don't be an off and on, hey, we're breaking up, but we're not, but we're breaking up and we're not. I think they even went through that situation when they had the no jumper uh, interview. Blueface said, okay, it's over, whatever. The next week they were back on again. Now, <laughs> I have to stop and give like a, a, I guess a disclaimer and say that, hey, some of this stuff might be to cause buzz and keep them hot in the streets. I understand some things are skits, some things are done for the camera, but if it's to be believed, right? You have to be very careful with that. Hey, we break up today, three days later we're together. You can't do that if you're going to fix a trauma bonding situation. If you are gonna step away, you have to be serious about it, even if it's for a short period. Do not be off and on, do not be wishy-washy. Because what you are showing that person is that um, they're always be in your life no matter what. If you're in that type of situation, that person knows that they have you. They know that they can re-enter at any time, right? In any situation. Even if you separate and get into two different relationships, that person knows that they have person a uh, problem in that relationship. They can always... Um, they always have an open door with you, if that makes sense. The next thing you could do is face your feelings. I have to go back and I, I talk about this on countless episodes on this channel because this channel is set up for uh, mental health and motivation. You know, it's one of the few channels on YouTube that is going to tackle both things because I think they're interchangeable. If you start tackling your mental health and getting to a certain level in that mental health, I think that motivation couples with it, right? And it makes you a more well-rounded person and it makes you uh, just better, right? You'll start advancing your life. You'll get into your purpose, things like that. So facing your feelings, fixing those traumas, right? If you have an original trauma, no matter what it is, we have to deal with it, family. You can't sweep it under the rug. What happens when you sweep something under the rug? Do you remember that old adage, you're sweeping dirt under the rug, right? <laughs> and, you know, when you sweep dirt under the rug, you can't see it, right? On the surface, nobody sees the dirt. But what happens when you lift that rug up, right? It's still there. So what I'm saying is, you want to take your life and you want to sweep 
the whole area. Lift under that rug, sweep under that rug, fix those traumas. If something happened to you in your childhood, if, if it was a parent that did it, if it was a step parent that did it, if it's an uncle, if it's an auntie, it's a family friend, we have to deal with it, family. Do not run away from it because some people run to drugs. Some people run to alcohol. Some people run to violence. Some people run to trauma bonding type relationships to get away from the trauma that they dealt with as a, as a younger person. And they keep it going. They don't know they're keeping it going because they think they're running from that situation. But the dirt is still under the rug. Does this, does this make sense? I hope it does. So let's sweep under, get these things resolved so we won't end up in these situations. You can validate yourself so many times in so many tight relationships. People look for validation from the other person. You might even call this codependency, right? In a way. You might be in a situation where you need love. You think you need love, but you don't know what love is. So you're looking for this person to validate you. They're gonna complete you. You're dependent on them for your happiness, which is not healthy. So you wanna validate yourself. How do you validate yourself? First, by fixing those traumas. Second, by improving on who you are as a person. This validates you. You don't need a, a, another person for you to feel whole. If this person, if you break up, you don't feel like a piece of you is missing. Right? You might be a little bit hurt that that person's not there anymore. Might be a little more lonely because you don't have this person you can just call or, and of course, the physical part, right? That's not there anymore. However, you are still a good person. You don't feel bad that that person is not there. If you feel like you're, um, you know, you can't go on, you can't live life at anymore because this person's not there anymore, you might want to check whether you were, you know, in a codependent relationship and you were using that person to validate you talk to a professional now what i recommend if it's couples right and they I, they had an episode where they kind of did some uh therapy where um they were in a room together and then they did it separate once again um i'm trusting that, that was a, a a real therapist and everything you never know on tv these days <laughs> what's choreographed what's not but if you're in a situation you and uh, you're going to go to therapy. What I recommend, and I'm not I'm not a, a licensed professional, but what I recommend, I have you know done some types of therapy before, is that the individuals go first, then do do it as a couple, right? Because if we do it as a couple, what tends to happen sometimes is it'll become well this person did this and this person did that, and that becomes the actual therapy session right but if we do single therapy right with ourselves we'll be more open to talk about things that we have to take responsibility for we have to go back and fix our own traumas first right once you start tackling those things and addressing those things then i think you'll be ready to do it as a couple because it won't become, well, this person is the reason why this is like this and they did this and they made me do this. Get what I'm saying? I hope this makes sense. I hope this makes sense. So let's go back and let's look at the things you can do if you end up in a trauma bonding situation, if you're already there or if you're heading into one, right? So I want you to communicate your needs clearly if that doesn't work, you can remove yourself from the situation. If you don't choose to do that, you can face your feelings. Remember, always validate yourself. And also, you can talk to a professional. And remember, those things aren't in any particular order. So you can do any one of those things first. You can talk to the professional first if you want. Or you can remove yourself from the situation if you want, right? But all in all, let's get healthy out here, family. Let's have healthy relationships to Blueface and Chris Shine. I hope they're best for you, right? 
There are rumors that you might have got married. I don't know. <laughs> but like I said, with these cameras, with these TV shows and these networks, I don't know what's real, what's not. More power to you. Much respect. Get your money, of course. But let's live healthier. This is your man, Brother T. See, I wasn't that hard on him, was I? See, I told you this is not a roast session. So I'm going to catch you on the next episode, family. And we're going to make it good. Peace.